I think he was shocked that when he was uh, appearing before that committee, so few members showed up that day. Well, that frequently happens because members have a lot of things going on at the same time. Uh, and it sounds to me like he's looking for some way to take offense. I feel like an ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> my God, I'm, I'm so, you know what, Stephen? I, now I feel stupid. This is a huge misunderstanding. I didn't know that they were busy. <laughs> I, I'm so, I'm so, I'm, oh boy, now I don't even know what to say. I, I'm so, so, I didn't mean to interrupt them with their jobs. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't even We've spent a year compiling bipartisan co sponsors and advocates for this bill all in the hopes that when it finally gets to the great Mitch McConnell's desk, you won't jack us around like you've done in the past. So, if you want to know why the 9-11 community has been out of shape over these past, let's call it 18 years, meet with them tomorrow as soon as possible and don't make them beg for it. You could pass this thing as a standalone bill tomorrow. Meet with them. I beg of you. You know what? If you're busy, I get it. <laughs> Just understand, the next time we have a uh, war, or you're being robbed, or your house is on fire, and you make that desperate call for help, don't get bent out of shape if they show up at the last minute with fewer people than you thought were going to pay attention and don't actually put it out. Just sort of leave it there, smoldering for another five years, because that's how it's done around here, mister. I'm sure they'll put it out for good when they feel like getting around to it. No offense. In what will likely be the final chapter of a multi-day back and forth between Jon Stewart and Mitch McConnell, the former Daily Show host literally came out of retirement, if only temporarily, to do what he does best. It started when Stewart went on Fox News to speak with Chris Wallace, at which point he put the blame squarely on McConnell's shoulders for years of not only slow walking the funding of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund, but also using it as a bargaining chip to tick off Republican agenda items. It's very likely that the House is going to pass the full bill that you want, extending the, the program through the lives of, of these people. Then sure. you have to go to the Senate. And in your testimony, you said Senate. that a certain someone, by which it appeared that you meant uh, Senate Leader Mitch McConnell, cannot be allowed to use this as a, quote, political football in negotiations on other spending bills. Have you had problems with Senator McConnell? Uh, yes. I mean, not me personally, but uh, in terms of getting the 9-11 bills passed, uh, Mitch McConnell has been the white whale of this since 2010. Uh, in 2010, you know, and, and this brings up something, because I think it's, it's the cynicism that's displayed by Washington that also causes this situation to be so emotional. Uh, they asked Mitch McConnell about the testimony uh, after it was done, and he said, oh, the uh, gosh, I think he used the word gosh, gosh, uh, we haven't looked at that in a while, but uh, we will look at it, and I'm sure we'll deal with it as compassionately as we have in the past. But I want to make it clear that this has never been dealt with compassionately by uh, Senator McConnell. Uh, he has always held out until the very last minute, and only then, under intense lobbying and public shaming, has he even deigned to move on it. Um, this is not a Republican-Democrat issue. There are Republicans on the bill. We'd obviously like to have more of them. Uh, but Senator McConnell has seen fit to, in 2010, he used it to uh, make sure that the Bush tax cuts would be permanent. In 2015, he took it out of the transportation bill uh, because he wanted to extract some uh, uh, promises on oil imports. And so in, in this bill right now, 2019, he's been aware of this. We were told in August that this fund was running out of money and that people were going to have their awards slashed by 30, 50, up to 70 percent. From there, McConnell went on Fox and Friends to tell Jon Stewart to chill, that it's only the lives of 9-11 first responders. And as you know, Congress is very busy passing zero legislation. Well, many things that Congress have at the last minute. We've never failed to, to address this issue, and we will address it again. I don't know why he's all been out of shape, but 
we, we will take care of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. Which brought us to this most recent appearance by Jon Stewart on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, in which he puts McConnell's entitled smug reaction on blast. And that's exactly what it is. Because while McConnell might try to pass this off as an issue of whether or not the VCF will ultimately be funded, and it will, that's not what this is about. The issue is that McConnell has historically held it hostage to exact concessions regarding tax cuts and oil imports, as if saving the lives of 9-11 first responders is a democratic issue, and that should he deign to allow them to live, Republicans ought to get something out of it too. The issue is that McConnell hasn't quite figured out that putting American heroes whose lives depend on swift action on the back burner isn't super patriotic. This is the leader of a party that exists solely to bash elitists, who's making American heroes dying of the cancer they got when they didn't think twice about saving lives on 9-11 wait their turn. Who's basically telling these people, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We've got Trump's unqualified judges to confirm, hop in line. These people are literally dying by the day. Seven of them died the week before Stewart made his plea to Congress. So if you mean to tell me that Democrats are the out of touch elites, I might suggest you turn your attention to the guy who's telling 9-11 heroes to relax already. He hasn't quite decided what he wants to exploit their health to get in return. Because let's be honest, these fossil fuel subsidies aren't gonna award themselves. That's what this is about. It's about giving a crap. Because while Mitch McConnell might not care about a group of guys from a reliably democratic state who don't have anything to offer him in return, it's his job to care. He might think his top priority should be to enact Trump's agenda by confirming hardline conservative judges or gaslighting the American public into thinking anything he doesn't like is radical socialism or carving out subsidies for fossil fuel companies, but it's to serve regular people. And no one is more deserving and more in need than those who didn't hesitate for even a moment before sacrificing their health, their future with their families and kids to save other Americans. They are always unequivocally and exclusively the number one priority. So Mitch McConnell should probably learn to put his ego aside and give the 9-11 first responders the respect they deserve or he'll risk looking like exactly what he is, an out of touch elite.